at one point, before the death penalty, this is one of the top programs in the country, and when they got the death penalty, it just totally destroyed the whole program, and, and it was just devastating for this university. Garbage. Garbage. I mean, just the past 25 years, nobody really even knew S who SMU was. I remember when I committed in high school, people were like, who is SMU? And that's SAG, you know, that's the school in Texas. But it was just, I mean, for the past 25 years, SMU was a joke. Horrible. Point black. Bad football. Point black. For a very long time, bad football. Coach Bennett's last year was 1-11, and that was a really disheartening year. You know, a culture of losing, obviously, uh, continued frustration about the status of the program and where we were headed. 1-11 season, you know, it was just, it felt like everything that could go wrong went wrong that season, you know. But really it came down on mindset because they've lost so long here that the kids needed uh, to believe and at that point in the program they weren't believing. It's sad, it's sad saying this, but a lot of people going into the game sometimes would expect to lose. And those guys didn't have fun for a couple seasons. They went 1-11 two years in a row. They lost a lot. I think it comes 25 years of losing. The expectations to win here weren't real high. Uh, some people didn't believe you could win here. But the culture here wasn't a winning culture. Once we all got on the same page as a team and started believing, that's when we would start to win. Now, inspired by a new coach, a new attitude, and a new outlook, the SMU Mustangs are determined to restore the glory of this one storybook program. Last season, uh, our kids uh, learned how to win games. As in any football program or football team, once you start to win, the confidence goes up and then you win more uh, as you go. And that's what happened to us. This is the loudest I think I've ever heard it at Ford Stadium here. What a landmark season it was. It's probably one of the top five uh, most memorable experiences of my life. Last year, I really think it was an attitude. And I think that mindset has really transformed this team to, you know, have that killer instinct to when a guy's down, don't just let him get up or, or pick his hand and help him get up, stump on his throat until he can't breathe anymore. To really just go after guys and really finish guys. We feel like we can go above and beyond what we did last year, and I'd be very disappointed if we didn't. These kids expect to win now. It's just a different mindset of your program right now. Last season, uh, our kids uh, learned how to hang together and persevere and win games. I mean, we were down, uh, and it didn't matter. I mean, we blocked kicks to win games. We, we did what we had to do to win games. I mean, we beat some teams that were a lot better than we were. Darius Johnson and Emmanuel Sanders are both back to receive this one, and it's going to go to Sanders near side at the 21. Heading right to the 30, 35, 40, dancing through the middle of the field, 45, midfield. He's got a blocker out in front. He takes the putter at the 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Emmanuel Sanders. It's too easy, Rich. It's the chip. And we found a way to win the game. We did what we had to do to win games, and you know that's what we learned how to do. It's fourth and goal at the one. Eight minutes to go, down by six. It's basically your, your ball game, Rich. Starting off with the shotgun. Mitchell in the shotgun. They're going to run an option left. Bo Levi turns it upfield into the end zone. Touchdown, SMU. Bo Levi Mitchell keeps it on fourth and goal at the one. SMU Mustangs do something they haven't done since 2000. That is win a season opener, 31-23 the final. They said that that was the greatest turnaround in the history of college football was going from 0-18 to nine wins. Said it'll be a dog fight. We just didn't believe him at first. And we fought, baby. And it feels good to win. Oh. Feel real good.
But it just goes to show when guys understand sacrifice, love for each other, and coming together for a common cause, the fun it can be and how, how we achieve. We set a goal for ourselves to be in the Hawaii Bowl. Let's turn this thing out tonight. This is our yeah, Get it. Let's get it. Let's go. I really felt that in order for us to get to the, you know, to that bowl game, we had to be no worse than two and two through those first four games. Langmeyer, a 37-yard field goal on the final play in the first half. And this one's blocked on the edge by Sterling Moore. Oh, it's picked up by Brian McCann. Touchdown, SMU. Ladrone out of a shotgun. Here comes a blitz. They pick it up in the last second. Kyle steps up. Caught. Emmanuel Sanders at the five. Sanders into the end zone. Touchdown, SMU. He's going to pitch it back to the quarterback. And Chase Kenner picks it off. Kenner gets his third fumble recovery of the afternoon and fires it into the student section to complete the SMU win. And that was such an emotional game. And we talked and we talked about that about how to build a championship team. So the emotions that were spent uh, on the field, I'm, I don't think I've ever been in a locker room or on a field where I saw finally just everything, tears and crying and, and just guys uh, having never experienced that and had so much inside for losing for so long. These kids expect to win now. They go into games feeling confident. They know if they execute and do the things that uh, you need to do as a football team that, that they've got a chance to win every ball game. I remember saying to myself, they know the feeling now, and uh, we're going to have a chance. Hands it off again to McNeil. Coming left, no room there. Somebody finds a hole, and he scores a touchdown. Second of the day for Chandra and McNeil on a play that looks dead to right. And the Mustangs win it. Seven wins for the first time since 1984. The ball fired into the SMU student section. Seven wins, baby, headed to Hawaii. That's what it's all about. Well, our, obviously, our confidence level went way up. And the guys understand that we're going to have to hang in and persevere and scrap and fight in every game again. I mean, that's, that's what we got to do. Good guy. Keep it up. Catch out Hawaii, straight up. It's been 25 years. Uh, since the university had the opportunity that the team provided this year. And I know many of you here have uh, been a part of all 25 of those years and have waited a long time for today. It is my great honor uh, on behalf of SMU to accept the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl's invitation to play in their bowl on Christmas Eve. And we have proven that there is life after death. For another winning season, the Mustangs enter training camp with a renewed spirit. Well, it was one of the better training camps I've been through. I think our kids are excited about the upcoming season. They're ready to play. I know right now we're ready to play somebody because we've been banging heads with each other for four weeks, and it's time to get the season started. We have had uh, an unbelievable offseason. It doesn't matter what you do once training camp starts, it's what you do from January to training camp that really you get a feel for whether you're turning the corner or not. Because everybody goes to camp first of August and has 29 practices. But it, the difference is how bad do you want it from January to August? Ready? Let's go! Spread it out! Jeez, oh, Pete! We have quartered the opponent. Tackler's on the right shoulder. When I give the command, set, go, I don't want ooziness. I want a nice, crisp, OK? Here we go. Go! We are fast, low, striking snakes. Here we go. That looks pretty good. Go! Not bad, Kevin. 
Come on, Loftus, you better be low, fast, and athletic. I think it was a, it was a pretty good camp, man. Uh, I, I came in this year just really looking to uh, show coaches that I can uh, get that spot, the starting spot that was up for uh, strong safety. You know, we still pretty much still battling, but um, I think it was a real good camp. We got, we got to see a lot of the new guys that was coming in. You know, um, it was a, I, I believe it was a um, harder camp in the aspect of uh, we had longer practices, you know, really had to – uh, mentally be, be prepared, mentally focused to uh, make it through such a long practice. But at the end of the day, I still think it was a great camp, a great camp for us to really um, get us in, in condition and in shape for uh, the season that's upcoming. So it was a pretty good camp, I believe so. Good, 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 good. Yeah. That's it. Attack, 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 attack. Temperatures hit a record breaking 107, a blistering 115 on the field. It was a hot one uh, for Texas standards. Uh, triple digit numbers pretty much every single day, but it also you know, produces toughness and a lot of endurance in our team. Yeah, you got some challenges in the weather you have in Texas. It's hot, it's humid. Uh, you practice in the mornings and uh, you hope you don't go out on that turf at four o'clock in the afternoon because it might be 120 degrees on that turf. Brutal, brutal, you know, but you know, it may be hot here, but who says it's not gonna be hot? to open the game against Texas Tech. So we're just preparing for the worst, and you know, we have to do that as a team. So, I mean, like I said, it was brutal, but we had to get used to it. As the last day of camp arrives, Coach Jones rewards his players by cutting the afternoon practice short for a dip in the pool, but with a twist. It's a tradition that was started uh, years ago in Hawaii. It's just, um, it's a test of team unity, your manhood, what you'll do when the bullets start flying live. Gung-ho, it just encompasses everything. I mean, Devon Best is playing in the NFL with the Dolphins. He couldn't swim, but he went because he had team trust. The guys would come get him. And it's all about that. Now, see, consequently, you don't think this matters. The first year at SMU, we didn't do this. We went 1-11. Last year, we did it. Eight wins, so maybe something. Well, they made the freshman go all the way to the top on a high dive, and uh, I'm very scared of heights. And uh, it took me a while to go, and when I went, it was just like a, like a gasp taken out of you. But when, once you hit the water, you feel you feel it's all fun and stuff like that. Oh, I was scared. I mean, I I go up there, and everybody keeps jumping off in front of me, and I'm looking down, and I just could not do it. I was one of the last ones. And it's one of those trust things, you gotta trust us. Football is a team sport. So yeah, we're gonna do this together. And on that note, we go. What's about to happen is, it, this is the funniest part of two-a-days. At the end of two-a-days, everybody gets together. Each position makes their own skit in front of the team. You know, just make it as funny as they can, make it as uh, interesting as they can. All right, so uh, again, uh, have fun tonight. Uh, I don't want to see this on the internet. I don't want to see it. This is inside our locker room. It'll be on cable TV, but I added it. <laughs> We went to the coaching staff. We want to uh, bring out Tom Mason. Mason, where you at, Mason? Y'all give it up for Mason. Y'all okay. came up that big defensive stand against Nevada last year, you know. But the big question is, how, how y'all gonna face up on Tech? You know, Tech is a that's a really great team. You know, how you feel your defense is gonna face up against Tech? Go out there and play our game. Next question. <laughs> <laughs>